Hello, welcome back. In the last class, we were reviewing the resolution, the numerical aperture and then spatial resolution and little bit about magnification and then empty magnification all such parameters. Today we will continue in those lines and you just look at the, the slide which we talked about in last class. The, the slide shows that the range of useful magnification in the light microscope. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a plot of uh, the combination of objective and ocular lenses where the, the green box indicates the combination of these two gives the useful magnification. So, in order to emphasize the light gathering power of an objective, which eventually defines the quality of the image, we will now have little bit of understanding or a discussion on the light grasping power of the objective lens. You have two types of objective lens, where one is a dry and other is an immersion objective lens. Both of them will have a different medium, the dry objective lens will have an air as a medium, where the immersion objective will have a, normally an oil where the refractive index of that oil will be much higher than the air. So, let us see how this is going to help us in grasping the light towards the objective lens, which is eventually going to improve the quality. So, let us look at the, uh, the, the schematic which I am going to draw about the light grasp of the objective lens. So, I am kind of uh, written a definition for the light grasp of an objective lens. It is determined by the angle of cone of rays that the objective can accept. And it also depends on depends on the relationship between diameter of the front objective and 
and its focal length for a given diameter. So, that means your light grasping power of an objective lens is fixed for a given diameter, but it has the relationship between diameter of the front objective lens and its focal length. So, let us draw some schematic which uh, illustrates this uh, concept. Let this surface be the object surface and we will concentrate the point P from where the, the reflection takes place and then let us assume this is an objective lens. Let it be center P. This is objective lens. So, this is a dry lens. So, the medium is air where the refractive index is equal to 1. So, now we will see that uh, the angle of cone accepted by this aperture is alpha and the distance is u. Let us consider this image as A. So, this is a dry objective lens. This is the object surface and from where the light is reflected and this is the objective lens. This is the, the cone. It is actually a cross section of a three dimensional cone and this is the angle. And this is the angle which I refer here is here, this one. So, now we will draw a similar schematic for a immersion ob objectives. So, now object surface, let it be the point P. and you have similar objective. Let the rays coming from this object which is get, getting collected by this objective is also similar. Let us mark the angle alpha, collection angle alpha. Now, we are going to introduce the medium. This is the medium between the objective lens and then object. Let us assume this, this is an oil which has got the refractive index greater than 1 and because of this, see uh, until this point these two are same, the once you introduce the medium between the objective lens and an object, then what happens to the collection angle.
So let us consider this as p dash. So what I have drawn here is now because of this medium and its refractive index is greater than 1 that is air, your uh, collection angle appears to be at p prime rather than p. So, you have the new collection angle alpha n. So, this makes the objective lens to collect lot more rays compared to the uh, dry objective lens. This is something similar to the, the water which is, water is filled in a pool. You can see that the things which are lying at the bottom will appear much closer than the actual distance. The similar effect you will get. So, you get more uh, clarity here. The, the point which I am trying to make here is once you fill the gap between the objective lens and object within a medium which is having higher refractive index, the light grasping power will be more. And similar thing you can, we can draw for the objects with cover slip. So, similar uh, this is with a specimen with a, a cover slip. What I have drawn here is it is a, a, a transparent glass cover on the specimen. Most of the transmission optical microscope this uh, cover slip is a part of the uh, microscopic system and even if you look at the uh, light gathering power for a specimen which is covered with cover slip, this is the uh, light gathering angle. So, now what will we will compare this with again with the oil immersion objective, what happens?
So, now let us uh, compare these two. So, this is an object with a cover slip and you see that uh, with the light which is uh, emanating from this object before it, it get collected into this objective lens, it undergoes reflection as well as refraction. And uh, only the rays which is subtending this angle come in within this angle get collected into the objective. And if you look at the same thing with an oil immersion, so almost all the rays which are coming from this area region is get collected. The similar effect what you see here will be felt here. So, your uh, light grasping power is enhanced. So, what we have now seen is uh, an object with a dry objective, an object with an immersion objective, an object with a cover slip, an object with a cover slip plus an immersion. So, these four figures clearly indicates that the light gathering power of an objective lens can be enhanced through some of the medium which has got higher refractive index than the air. So, that is the point. So, now we will move on to the next important parameters or concept in microscope depth of field and depth of focus. So, let us look at the preliminary definitions. The depth of field Z in the object plane refers to the thickness of the optical section along the z axis within which objects in the specimen are in focus. On the other hand, depth of focus is the thickness of the image plane itself. So, for a diffraction limited optics, the wave optical value of z that is depth of focus is given as z equal to n lambda divided by numerical aperture square, where n is refractive index of the medium between the lens and the object. Lambda is the wavelength of the light in the air and n a is numerical aperture of the objective lens. So, what you have to remember is a depth of field is related to the object and depth of focus is related to the image. It is the distance with which you move the object, still you see the image is in focus, that distance is called depth of field and similarly, you have the thickness of the image within which you, you will have the total image in, in focus is called depth of focus. We will understand this uh, the mathematical relation with few more uh, schematic. We will also look at the, the other concept to field of view that is uh, what is the region you will be able to view through your eyepiece or objective lens that depends upon some of the basic quantities. So, let us first look at the depth of field. Let me draw a simple ray diagram for a glass lens. So, this is uh, optic axis, then you have rays coming from the object. And it forms an image I and this is our uh, alpha 
you know that now. This is objective. So, let us say point P 1. Now, let me draw another point P 2. Let me write few lines. So, what I am trying to uh, emphasize here is, so this is the, I just said that uh, your depth of field is the object plane. So, the distance with which you can move the object, still you get the image under the complete focus. So, Raleigh suggested that, let us assume this is, uh, this ray coming from P1 plane and this is from P2 plane. He suggested that for a plane P2 also appear in just focus, the path in the image space of the marginal rays, these two rays, the path, the uh, optical path of these two marginal rays from the two planes, from these two planes P1 and P2 should differ by less than a quarter wavelength. So, if this path dif difference is within a quarter wavelength, then the image will be in the focus. So, for that he has written given a expression, a depth of field, since we call it a z, let us put it here, is equal to plus or minus lambda by 4 divided by n sin square alpha by 2, which is nothing but z equal to plus or minus n lambda divided by numerical aperture square. So, so, this is what I have just shown in the slide. So, it is given from the Rayleigh's explanation for the depth of field.
So now let us look at what is field of U. Let me write some few lines. The field of U depends on both objective as well as eyepiece. The design, correction, and focal length of the eyepiece determine diameter of the primary image that can be observed. So, let us look at this uh, sentence again. The field of U depends upon both objective and eyepiece. The design, correction, what is correction? We will talk about uh, lens defects just after this and then we have to correct that defects and then you have to choose a focal length and that depends upon these design correction and focal length various eyepieces are possible similarly objectives various eye objective lenses are also possible so that is what it is so that time you will appreciate this term so these three design correction and focal length of the eyepiece determine the diameter of the primary image that can be observed So, we can write a, a simple uh, expression, the field of U index S yes of eyepiece we can relate with this a magnification. This is true for a simple ray diagram. Where d i is a diameter of image field. and d not equal to diameter of of the object field and since uh, your field of view index s is equal to d i we can write uh, d naught is equal to s by m this is magnification m is magnification s is field of v of index and d naught is a diameter of the object field so what it what it means the lower the magnification of the objective, the greater becomes the 
field of view. And we will also write uh, one more expression. the field of u index and the focal length of eyepiece that is f e determine angle of sigma that is the angle of cone of rays entering the eye. So, ultimately we are interested in this, the field of view index and the focal length of the eyepiece F e determine the angle of view sigma that is the angle of cone of rays that is entering into your eye when you look at the microscope. So, this angle is given by given by if you consider this as the cones section and this is your sigma by 2, this is an angle of view here it is sigma. The sigma and alpha are the same since I have taken from different different references they have uh, used a different symbol. So, here it is alpha, the collection angle is alpha, here it is referred as sigma, both are same. And this distance is uh, F e, that is focal length of the eyepiece. And this is S by 2, this is a field of view index. Since we are considering only in the off of the cone, section. So, this is S by 2. So, based on this we can the angle you can write tan sigma by 2 equals S divided by 2 times F e. So, this is the we can write the eye can accommodate an angle of view of up to approximately 50 degrees. So, we, we just looked at the light grasping power of the an objective lens and similarly we also uh, were interested in the field of view uh, up to which you can just see that uh, object of the interest and that is determined by the, the eyepiece characteristics that is the design correction focal length and so on and then it specifically it can be considered through this formula. So, that is the another uh, 
aspect of the field of view. Let us now look at the uh, come back to this depth of field and depth of focus. So, the larger the aperture angle that means uh, the higher the numerical aperture the shallower will be the depth of field and you can see this um, example a photograph with uh, a small depth of field. So, when you have a shallow depth of field this is how your image will look like and this is another example where you have uh, the area within the depth of field appears sharp this the butterfly image appears sharp within this depth of field while the areas in front and the beyond depth of field appear blurry. And these two graphs uh, sorry schematics illustrates the depth of field range as a function of uh, numerical aperture. You can see that uh, as we stated earlier and your uh, higher numerical aperture means smaller depth of field, lower numerical aperture means higher depth of field. And this plot shows clearly that uh, the depth of field versus numerical apertures as the numerical aperture increases your depth of field decreases and these two data points for dry and immersed objectives and obviously you see that uh, the immersed objective lens performs better as compared to dry objective lens. And now that you know why it is so, we have clearly seen on the blackboard with some example how the immersion aperture enhanced the light grasping power of the lens and then eventually the image quality. So now, uh, so this is the same thing as the magnification is increased, the depth of field of the objective becomes smaller. And typically falling from 250 micrometer at 15x to 0 0.08 micrometer at 12000x. It is a kind of a range. So, the specimen flatness becomes more critical. So, that is why you see that uh, a very you know shallow depth of field once you cross this range. Now, we will uh, go to the next uh, concept called contrast. See in most of the optical micrograph or for, for instance you take any uh, micrograph, people are interested in the contrast, best contrast and the quality. So, let us understand the term contrast. What is contrast? Let us look at the preliminary remarks. Amplitude energy and intensity which is energy flux are related such that the intensity of the wave is proportional to the square of its amplitude. That is I read it again amplitude which is energy and the intensity which is energy flux are related such that the intensity of the wave is proportional to the square of its amplitude I proportional to A square. For an object to be perceived, the light intensity corresponding to the object must be different from the nearby flanking intensities and thereby exhibit contrast. The contrast C is defined as the ratio of intensities that is C is equal to delta I by I B. where delta i is the difference in the intensity between an object and its background and i b is the intensity of the background. If i objective is equal to i background as it is for many transparent microscope specimens c is equal to 0 and the object is invisible. Okay. More specifically, 
the visibility requires that the object exceed a certain contrast threshold. So, what we are interested in, in, in any micrograph I say mentioned, you have a, we are interested in, in the features which we are looking for. And to examine that feature, you need to look at them much more clearly. For that, what you normally see in any micrograph is three colors, right? A bright, a gray, and a black. So, out of these, uh, these three, your object will be perceived as an, an individual entities. And the entities which you are looking at is many, much more clear only when this uh, the contrast is good. So, what is that? In a bright light, the contrast threshold required for an visual detection may be as little as 2 to 5 percent, but should be many times that value for object to be seen clearly. In dim lighting, the contrast threshold may be 200 to 300 percent depending upon the size of the object. The term contrast always refers to the ratio of two intensities. So, before we wind up the contrast, let us uh, recall the, the definition of the very definition of the contrast. In order to perceive that image, you need to have an object should have a particular uh, intensity and its background should have a very different intensity. Unless there is a significant difference in intensity between the object and in a background, your entity will not be able to be recognized by your eye. So, always the contrast is the the ratio of the, the difference in the intensity of the object and then the background to the object intensity of the background. This, so, it is a ratio, ratio of the two intensities as a contrast. We will talk about this contrast much more when we progress in the image analysis in the later part of it. And for time being, I just want you to uh, just remember this definition, basic definition. Now, we will talk about uh, lens defects. All the time we talked about an objective lens and an eyepiece and their characteristics and light gathering power and so on. So, all this light gathering power and then which, which has the complete control of image quality depending upon the defects of the lens also. So, let us first look at the what are the lens defects in general and then we will see in, in each defects how it can be corrected uh, for a better quality image. So, let us look at this slide which summarizes the whole lens defects. The schematic A is a chromatic aberration and schematic B is a spherical aberration. And these two chromatic and spherical aberrations are classified as on axis aberrations. Okay. And schematic C is a coma and schematic D is astigmatism. And the coma and astigmatism are classified as half axis aberrations. And then we have offshoot of this a distortion which is a field curvature and you have a barrel distortion or pin cushion distortion. So, we will see one by one and we will try to understand what are these defect really means. First look at, look at the spherical aberration, look at the schematic, what do we see? We see that the rays which are 
coming close to the optic axis are focused the farthest and the rays which are passing through the periphery of the lens are focused in the nearest and the rays which are passing through in between these two are focused between these two points. So, you have the position of focus ranging from a distance like this which constitute an image. So, let us look at the, the preliminary remarks. The aberration is caused by the spherical shape of the lens surface that is because of this spherical surface. The name itself uh, tells it is more severe the greater the aperture of the lens. It occurs for most positions of an axial object point, but for certain positions it becomes 0. Such aberration free object and image points are aplantic points, excuse me, aplanatic points. For a spherical surface, one pair of such points lies at a distance n r and r by n from the center of curvature where r is the radius of the curvature. And this parameter is used to uh, fabricate the high power lenses that is uh, aplanatic points concept and, and this aberration can be largely but not completely eliminated by use of combinations of converging and diverging lenses of different refractive indexes. This is one of the important uh, and very difficult defects to, to be eliminated in the optical lens. So, we will look at this uh, pericle aberration, how it is being eliminated in the due course. And other aberrations we will see in the next class.